In relation to statistical information, Article 32 of the International Coffee Agreement 2007 reads as follows. 1. The organisation shall act as a centre for the collection, exchange and publication of a. Statistical information on world production, prices, exports, imports and re-exports, distribution and consumption of coffee, including information on production, consumption, trade and prices for coffees in different market categories and products containing coffee, and b. Insofar as is considered appropriate, technical information on the cultivation, processing and utilisation of coffee. 2. The Council may require members to furnish such information as it considers necessary for its operations, including regular statistical reports on coffee production, production trends, exports, imports and re-exports, distribution, consumption, stocks, prices and taxation, but no information shall be published which might serve to identify the operations of persons or companies producing, processing or marketing coffee. Members, in so far as is possible, shall furnish information requested in as detailed, timely and accurate a manner as is practicable. Based on the example prepared for document ICC 1029, let's assume the exporting member, identified by its ICO code as 999, has issued 20 certificates of origin to cover its exports in the month of October 2012, as shown here. The objective now is to prepare a statistical report for October 2012 based on the 20 certificates of origin issued. In order to do this, we need to group the data by country of destination in accordance with the ICO country code and by form and type of coffee. The results are shown here. It's now much easier to identify each of the fields by country of destination based on the form and the type of coffee, the method of processing and any relevant additional information. The countries of destination are now grouped alphabetically, starting in this case with Belgium. The total net weight and value by country of destination is then calculated for those shipments where the form and type of coffee and method of processing are identical. The statistical report for the month of October 2012 can then be created and emailed to the organisation with data extracted from the 20 certificates of origin issued to cover shipments from exporting member 999 in October 2012. This should be presented as an Excel file or compatible format. So, using Colombia, the destination as an example, on the statistical report the three separate certificates of origin are presented as one entry because the form of coffee, green, the type, robusta, and the method of processing, dry, are the same. The values are added together to give a total value in US dollars. We're now going to cover the information that needs to be sent on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. Starting with the monthly information, this needs to be sent within 30 days of the close of the month. Indicate the volume of coffee estimated to have been exported. If your country produces more than one type and processes coffee by more than one method, please provide a breakdown by type of coffee and by method of processing.
Indicate in an email or fax how much growers have been paid each month in national currency per unit of weight of coffee at farm gate level. If the member country produces both Arabica and Robusta coffee, there should be prices for each type of coffee. Members should also include in the monthly email information on the retail price and, if available, on the wholesale price of roasted and soluble coffee in national currency per unit of weight in which these coffees are commonly traded in the country. As the processing industry has been growing in many exporting countries, some of these countries are importing coffee from several origins in order to supply the domestic market either for direct consumption or for processing. Where imports take place in any given month, the member should provide a detailed report indicating the volume and value by origin for each form and type of coffee imported. As the local coffee authorities may have to contact their customs authorities and or their central bank in order to obtain information on imports, the member may opt to send a complete imports report at the end of each calendar year. Going on to the quarterly data, at the beginning of the first quarter in each crop year, exporting members should provide the estimated volume of the crop for that year and the volume of coffee estimated to be consumed internally in the country. These estimates should be revised or confirmed as necessary at the beginning of each quarter so that at the end of the crop year it's possible to assess the actual size of the crop. If your country produces more than one type of coffee, please provide a breakdown of these estimates for each type of coffee produced in volume or equivalent percentage. Going on to the annual data, an estimate as a percentage needs to be provided of the annual crop by quarter in order to allow more accurate conversion of crop year data into the calendar and or coffee year. Members that produce more than one type of coffee should indicate the crop percentage distribution for each type separately. This information refers to stocks of green and processed coffee held in the country for export and domestic consumption other than coffee already purchased for consumption by retailers, hotels, restaurants, etc. Those members producing more than one type of coffee should also provide data on the stocks classified by type. The organisation should be informed about the number of trees with respective area in production and the number of new trees with respective area not yet in production. The area under coffee should be reported in hectares so that it is possible to calculate the productivity per hectare and the yields achieved in the country. This concludes the current statistical requirements exporting members are asked to comply with in accordance with the rules on statistics approved by the International Coffee Council. For more specific details, please refer to the documents covered by this presentation or contact the Statistics Unit of the International Coffee Organisation by telephone, fax or email.